Oh, that's a good question. Um, so different cells have different parts to them. Um, so not all cells look like this. Some cells are a lot smoother than this. But this cell right here has a lot of proteins and carbohydrates on its surface. And this is a white blood cell. And so the white blood cell's job is to seek out and destroy viruses and bacteria. And those proteins help them do that. They're like antenna that you can sense other cells around them. So that's what you see on the cell membrane surface is chemicals that mark the cell, advertise it, let the, let the other cells know what kind of cell it is. And also they're used to sense things within the environment. So that's why for white blood cells, you're gonna see a lot of different things on them. But for other ones, you won't see as many parts to the cell. Internal and external factors regulate cell division. <laughs> external factors would include physical and chemical signals. Men, yes, Lauren. So there's chemical signals that change how the cell grows and divides. Growth factors are the chemicals that stimulate cell division. So when you need to grow, the body sends out growth factors, which are proteins that tell the cells to divide. So that's a chemical factor that tells the cells to start to, to reproduce. Oops, sorry, let me go back, went too far. And now I can't go back for some reason, sorry. Let me get back to this. There we go. Where do I go for the slideshow? There we go. Okay. There we go. It's strange with these because I lose it really, and I don't can't go back for some reason. Anyway, here we go. So that's chemical factors, growth factors. And there's also physical factors, which is the cells touching each other. So cells usually, if they're normal healthy cells, will form a single layer in self-dividing once they touch other cells. So normal growth you can see on the left-hand side is just a single layer of cells. Once they touch each other, they stop growing. And they don't build other layers. But if it's cancerous cells, the ones you can see in red, they keep on growing and they go on top of each other and they don't stop. They don't have that physical mechanism to stop themselves from growing. Yeah. Oh, telomeres? Yeah, that's, that's one thing. Cause if they're, if they're cut off, they can't divide anymore. Yeah, that's one thing that would stop them from growing. Not really, no. Yeah, they pretty much they they they're a lot longer than normal. They don't they don't shorten very easily. So yeah, a lot of cancer cells just grow without limit, and they just don't have any limit to how much they can grow and reproduce. And that's why it's so hard to treat. It always comes back. So if we could find a way to understand why cancer cells keep on growing, we might find a way to reverse or stop aging. But the problem is, is to find a way to do that without causing cancer. We don't know how to do those two things at the same time. Does everybody have these done? So those are two things that can change how cells grow. If you have too much growth factors, you might have abnormal cell growth, which could cause cancer or could just cause you to, to be larger. Um, physical factors also, the cells keep on growing when they shouldn't be. That definitely causes cancer if they don't stop when they're supposed to by touching each other. Yes. Exactly, yes. Yeah, a tumor is just a bunch of, of cancerous cells in one place, yeah. 
you don't need to. I mean, it certainly helps I mean, if you do draw pictures, but you don't have to draw those pictures, no. Okay, external factors. Let's go through a few examples of that. So there are platelets, which are sticky fragments of bone marrow cells. You can see in this picture right here, they're the smallest of the cells. You can see the red blood cell, the larger are the white blood cells. They're the ones that are purple white. And then platelets would be the smaller white specks on there. So bone marrow makes blood cells. And that's where you get your red blood cells and white blood cells produced is your bone marrow. So what also is made though is parts of the bone marrow come off into the blood and that makes platelets. So platelets are sticky fragments of bone marrow cells. And the job of platelets is to form clots to stop bleeding. And so when you're bleeding, they help to trap the fiber and keep it in place so the blood doesn't go out. And that makes a scab when that happens. Sorry, let me go back for a second. I lost it again. Here we go. So platelets store a kind of growth factor that helps repair wounds. They trigger the growth of many different kinds of cells. So when you are injured, platelets send out chemical signals to recruit cells in there to repair the injury, to make more cells, to replace the ones that were injured. Sorry, let me get back to there. Lost it again. One day I'll figure out why it does this. Erythropoietin, it stimulates the production of red blood cells. So when you need to make more red blood cells, erythropoietin is secreted from your platelets. And that chemical tells the body to make more red blood cells. If you go up to Denver, where the air is thinner, your body will secrete more erythropoietin to make more red blood cells because you're getting less oxygen in your blood and the body understands that and responds to make more red blood cells. So if you go to live in Denver for a while, you'll have more red blood cells than if you stay here in Dallas because it's a lot higher sea level up there, thinner air. So if you were to train in high elevation, like in Denver, and then come back down to Dallas, you would have more endurance than people who just stayed in Dallas the whole time. Because people who train in high altitudes have a lot more red blood cells and that gives them more endurance. <laughs> so because of that, some athletes will just take erythropoietin as a supplement to make more red blood cells. Uh, but that's incredibly dangerous to do that. And so it's been banned from all professional sports. Doctors won't prescribe it to you because it's, it's a very dangerous thing to do because it makes your blood very thick and you're prone to all sorts of problems, heart problems, blood clotting. It's incredibly dangerous. But athletes will do that to try to get more endurance because with more red blood cells, you do get more endurance. <laughs> another growth fact or another um, chemical that causes growth would be growth hormone. And growth hormone stimulates bone growth and metabolism. And so as you're growing, growth hormone is secreted. When you stop growing, then this stops being secreted. People who are shorter might have less growth hormone secreted in their body. People who are taller have more growth hormone secreted for longer periods of time. There was one person who grew up to almost nine feet tall before he died. He just never stopped growing growth hormone was secreted all throughout his life through his 20s. And he would have grown forever, it seems like, but he died at a young age because when you get taller, blood doesn't transport very easily to your limbs. So people who are very tall usually die earlier than people who are short because circulation is it's difficult when you get taller. So people who are short on average live longer than people who are tall. And that mostly is due to the blood circulation. <laughs> yes. Did you 
Yeah, yeah that, I'm talking about like, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. I'm not talking, I'm not talking like, I mean, yeah, on average, the taller you are, the, on average, the taller you are, the more prone you are to blood clotting, heart problems, things like that. Yes. So then my grandpa, since he's really tall, mm. that's Probably. I mean, again, it's hard to know for sure his condition. It, it, I mean, but most likely, yes, it's hard. Your heart, it gets worn out more easily. The pumps bled to a, a larger body, than a smaller body. So whether you have more weight on you or whether you just are taller, the heart gets overtaxed and you're, it's hard to circulate blood to your limbs when you get taller. Okay, external factors trigger internal factors, which affect the cell cycle. So when the cells touch each other, they will stop growing, but when they stop growing, chemicals are secreted to tell them to stop growing. So there are important internal factors. There's two chemicals that regulate the cell cycle. They're called kinases and cyclins. And so kinase is an enzyme that when activated, transfers a phosphate group to a target molecule. Oh, sorry, I'm about it. So a kinase increases the energy of a target molecule or changes the shape of that target molecule. And a cyclin is a protein that activates kinase. Both cyclins and kinases work together to advance the cell through the cell cycle. And so this is how the cell moves through the cell cycle. It goes from G1 to S to G2 to M stages. It's by kinases and cyclins moving through the cell, telling the cell to continue to grow and to divide. Oh, sorry, let me go back. There we go. So cyclins activate kinases, kinases then activate other parts of the cell. And they do that by activating a phosphate group. They move a phosphate group, which gives energy to a certain part of the cell. And that will then cause the cell to do something.
Anybody on this stone? Everybody good? Apoptosis is programmed cell death, which sounds strange, you know, but it actually is common in humans and animals and plants to have cells die naturally, you know, through disease or old age, but also other cells die because the body wants them to die. The body tells them to die for different reasons. So, for example, on a baby developing in the womb, babies have webbed fingers when they're young in the womb. The fingers are not separate. And so the skin between the fingers has to die to then create the fingers. So apoptosis is programmed cell death where the body wants cells to die for different reasons. When they're developing, that, that's just, uh, think about, you know, like if you're molding something, right? You're gonna start with like a block and then after the block, you then start to like scrape away parts of it. So that's what's happening with the baby too. The baby starts with a couple of cells and it's like a blob, it's like a circle. And from that circle, then you start to mold the head, the arms, the legs, you know, like chipping away the skin to, to make the, the body. <laughs> This also happens in plants, you know, the leaves are programmed cell death when when the stem of the leaf um, falls off the tree to the ground, the cells that connect the leaf to the tree are dying. And that's what causes the leaf to fall off the, the, the it's basically salt off the tree. The cells slowly die, just like you see with the fingers where the skin is worn away. Same thing with the leaves. So there are internal or external signals that activate genes that produce enzymes that destroy the cell. And so the body recognizes that there are certain times when cells need to go away. And usually it's for growth and development, and usually when the baby is in the womb. And after um, the cells have died, the, the remains of the cells are then swept up by white blood cells. The white blood cells gobble up the fragments and recycle the parts. It breaks down the cell further into chemicals to make more cells. So as I mentioned, this is a normal feature of healthy organisms. It's a way to change um, their body structure, usually as they grow. Oh, sorry. Um, on this slide, don't worry about writing down the fourth bullet point because it's basically a repeat of earlier. So you can just write down the first three bullet points on this slide. So as we mentioned, it occurs primarily in infants and humans. That's when it would occur when the baby is developing in the womb. <clears throat> Babies also have tails lots of times when, when they're very, very young and the tail is then disintegrated. So that's also apoptosis in that case. Cell division that's not controlled is called cancer. When cancer cells start to divide, they form these clumps 
they're not organized at all. They're just a bunch of cells put together. They're called tumors. So a tumor is, is a mass of cells. It may or may not be cancer cells. Sometimes a tumor isn't cancer cells. Other times it is. So there are benign tumors, which remain clustered in one place and they don't move through the body, they just stay intact. And so those are not cancerous. If they stay where they are and don't spread, they're not cancerous. So a benign tumor is, you know, benign means harmless. And so it's a tumor that you can remove and it's not going to hurt your body. It's not going to spread. But the other kind of tumor type, malignant tumors, they are very dangerous and those are cancer. They can metastasize, which means that they can break away from their location and spread through the body and create more tumors. And that's called stage four cancer. When you have the tumors metastasizing, where they're moving throughout your body, that's the last stage of cancer. Very hard to treat at that stage. And that's why it's important to catch, catch, catch cancer early because if you catch it in stage one, where it's just in one place, you can remove it and you have very good chances of surviving that because the tumor is not spread throughout your body. But if you're in stage four, where it's throughout your body, very hard to survive that. It's not impossible, but it's a lot hard to survive that. Yeah, they have, yeah. It, again, it's a lot harder to do, um, but people have survived it. It's just, usually your chance goes down a whole lot when you get stage four cancer. Do what? Mm. No, um, usually in stage four, it's all throughout your body. And so it's a lot harder to get rid of it than in stage one. Lots of times in stage one cancer, you can, just, you can do a simple surgery to remove that one part because stage one means it's just localized. It's in one place. And so you can remove it. Like it's like a tiny mole on your skin. You can just remove. But if you get to stage four, it's like roots in a tree that have entrenched themselves in your body and they're intertwined with your body cells. And it's, it's spread throughout your body. It's a lot harder to do that. So at that point, you would need radiation therapy or chemotherapy besides just surgery. Because at that point, surgery is not going to, to remove it. You need more than surgery to remove it. So it's a lot harder to, to do that when you get to stage four cancer. And the bottom right picture is showing you the cancer cells leaving the tumor and going into the blood system. So that's what the right part shows you. The, the blood supply. I can't use my mouse on here, but this is, these are the tumor cells leaving the tumor and going into the blood system. And they spread throughout the body that way. But if you can catch it before it gets to that point, then you have a good chance of surviving the cancer. So why, do they do that? why do the cancer cells do that? Yeah. They're just very active cells. Cancer cells are cells that need food and they look for food anywhere they can find it. And the blood system has a good amount of food. And so they they just move around to get food to grow. They're they're cells that grow very very fast, and they need lots of food to grow very fast. Yeah. Because they crowd out your good cells. So they're cells that don't work. They're cells that don't do anything for your body. And so if they're say in your brain, they're not going to work like brain cells. They're going they're going to crowd out your good brain cells and kill your good brain cells and replace them with their cells, which don't do anything for your brain. So basically, it, it just destroys your body. Wherever organ it's in, it destroys that organ. So one very common cancer is skin cancer. And skin cancer, if you catch it early, you have a good chance of surviving it. But if you don't catch it early, then half the time it's deadly. If you just let it grow, it doesn't, you don't get it treated. And so skin cancer, it's very important that, especially if you have moles in your body, to, to watch for changes in those moles. Because it is a very dangerous skin cancer type if you don't treat it. So these are things to look for. Can you read that? Yeah, it's pretty readable. So 
you think about it as A, B, C, D, E. You think about, think about those. A is for asymmetry. And so if the mole is not symmetrical, it could be cancer. So you can see on the right hand side, that top picture, the mole doesn't have symmetry. Where on, on the left hand side, it's, a, it's almost a perfect circle. So if the moles are not a regular shape, they could have, they could be cancerous. Doesn't mean that they are, it just, they might be cancerous. B is for border. And so cancerous cells have uneven borders. So they're jagged, crusty or notched or uneven borders. Well, for a normal mole, you can see it's a very defined sharp border. C is for color. Healthy moles have one color. Cancerous moles can have several colors within them. Um, especially white and blue are bad colors for moles. So if you see white and blue in a mole, that's not a good color to have. So if you see a wide variety of colors in your moles, or if you see a color change in your moles, then that's something to look for. D is for diameter. And so take a pencil eraser, like up the end of your pencil, and if the mole is bigger than that, then that could be cancer. It doesn't mean that it is, but bigger moles are more problematic and should be watched closely for changes in their size and shape. And then E is for evolving. So a mole that changes size is something you want to watch for as well too. So if you have these things, it doesn't mean you do have skin cancer, but it means you should go to the doctor and get it checked out. Um, definitely, you should watch your body for changes in, in moles and other things, any kind of lump, any kind of bump that doesn't go away, you definitely want to go to the doctor for. Because you know, it's up to you, your doctors know what looks normal for you, what doesn't look normal for you. So it's up to you to check your body to make sure that things are not changing. And if they are changing, go to the doctor and get it checked out early. Because as you get older, you know, it's, it's you know, more common for you to have these, those things happen. And only you can know what is changing in your body. Especially if you go out without sunscreen, that's a big risk for skin cancer, is to going outside, getting sunburned without sunscreen. You can. Sick? Like what kind of sick? Like what, what, what kind of, what do you mean by sick? Like, like, yeah, I mean, it's pretty safe. I don't really know what they mean by that. Moving moles is, is very, I mean, it's very quick. You can go into a doctor's office, get it done in like 10 minutes and it's done. So it's very fast. Oh, yeah, well that with the infections from that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure even being sick though. I mean, it's pretty safe. It's very fast and very safe. Yeah. Um, it's good for you to understand like just the basics. So not like every single word on here, but just A, B, C, and D and like what those represent would be good. We don't have to write down every single detail below that. And generally moles that have hair on it are usually not cancerous too. So that's one thing, you can have really large moles, but generally if there's hair on the mole, like especially if it's on your scalp, for example, it's generally not cancerous, but it, it, it still could be, but it's just less likely for it to be cancerous if, if there's hair from it too. If any mole that concerns you, you should go to a doctor and get checked out. And big moles, you can get removed, even, even if they're cancerous. If you don't like how they look, you can get them removed. It's very fast and they would remove them and um, just make sure they got all of the mole taken out. Usually to get it early, you won't have anything to worry about in the future. Like usually the cancer is gone at that point. If you wait to get it removed though, it could spread throughout your body. They could be deadly at that point. Um, they might. I mean, for I don't know how they know when every can. I guess basically partly on how it looks, but they would just get a large enough area to be to ensure they got all the cancer out. They they don't always get it right. Sometimes doctors don't get enough out, and they they don't get all the cancer cells out. And so that also is a possibility. I suppose they go by sight though, and just 
how it looks than more than anything else. Where they would just say, well, it looks like it's all taken out. But that's a good question. I need to check and see exactly how they know what to take out, what not to take out. I'm not sure about that and how they determine that. Because a microscope, I mean, they could use one in, in the operating room, but I don't know if they would. But even so, with a microscope, they couldn't really tell for sure. I don't know. But I'll look at that and see exactly how they would know that. But I know that it is very important in a surgery. They do make sure that all the cancer is taken out. Because if it's not, it'll just come back again. Anybody have this done? <clears throat> Other cancer cells don't look like melanomas though. So this is one kind of skin cancer called melanoma where it's dark. But you can also have other skin cancers that look like, like a clear blister. And so some skin cancers look like an open sore or a clear blister. And so if you have a blister that doesn't go away and just or it like is oozing, um, that also could be cancer. Melanomas though, the ones that look like moles are the worst skin cancers. So these are the ones that are most deadly. The other kinds of skin cancers are less deadly than this kind. Hmm? No, that's a good question. Um, they're not, uh, that's a virus. And so moles are, um, warts are harmless. It, it's, it's a virus that can stay for years though on your skin. So a wart can stay there for a very long time. Um, but they're not going to be harmful to your body. They won't spread like cancer spreads. It's possible. That's not common, but it, it could happen. Yeah, freezing them off is a good way to get rid of them. Um, but yeah, warts can stay for years in your body if not treated. But your whole life, I mean, maybe, but not. that's not as common. So um, this picture shows you an MRI. Um, with the tumor in red. So that's a brain tumor. You can see the the red part of the brain is cancer. Oh, it's a terrible disease. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I mean, if you catch it early, I mean, you have a good chance of surviving if you catch it early. Yeah, and that's the problem with brain cancer is that wherever it is, it, it damages that part of your brain. And so it could damage your memory where you, you lose your sense of memory, or you can damage your speech where you can't talk anymore, or damage your hearing or, or eyesight or other things. So cancer is a large clump of rapidly dividing cells that require lots of food and a blood supply, but do not contribute to the body's functioning. So cancer cells take in a lot of nutrients a lot of energy, but they don't help the body in any way. They crowd out the good cells, make the good cells die. So a growing tumor can exert pressure on the organs. And so the brain tumor will put pressure against the brain. So brain cancer, one of the signs of brain cancer is a headache all the time, like a really, really bad headache because the tumor is pressing against your brain and you feel as a headache. And as the tumor will press against the brain cells or other organ cells, it kills them. It basically suffocates them as it presses against them. And as a cancer tumor grows, it just kills more and more cells in its path. Cancer cells come from normal cells with damage to the genes. And so during the cell cycle regulation, the genes are damaged. Cancer cells are damaged genes that keep on growing. I'm sorry, let me go back. There we go. Oh, I had it, I'm sorry. No, I'm back too far. There we go. <laughs> So it's just so important, you know, whenever something doesn't go right in your body to go to the doctor and get it checked out. Because, you know, it's hard to know what's going on, but if it is something like cancer, it's important to get caught very early. Because if you get it early, you can get it removed. It's not a problem for you. 
So now they go in, they drill the, the skull open, they saw it open or drill it open, and they go in there and they um, cut open the brain and pull out the part that is cancerous. They like have a flap, like they drill a circle or a solid circle in the brain, and then they, they pull up the, the you know, it's like a cap, like the skull comes off, and they just put the cap back on that they took off. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what? Yeah, they, they would. I mean, that would, when, when they have um, brain surgery, they're going to damage parts of the brain. There's really no way around it. You're going to damage some of the brain cells. The goal is to minimize the damage, but there's no way to get around it. You're going to be damaging brain cells. So brain surgery is very risky because it is going to involve damaging the brain. But if you have a brain tumor, well, you need to get it done because it's only going to get worse if you don't get it removed. Did you have a question, Kristen? Did you have a question, Kristen? By the trash can, if, you, if it's the pink basket below the trash can. <laughs> There's two major kinds of genes in the, in the cells that regulate the cell growth and the cell cycle. One of them is called the proto-oncogene. Yes. So there's two main genes that can be damaged that can cause cancer. And the first one is a proto-oncogene that could be damaged that can cause cancer. So the proto-oncogene is like a gas pedal in the cell. It tells the cell to grow and divide. But normally this should only be on at certain times. It should not be on all the time. But if it is on all the time, it can become a cancerous cell where it's always growing and never stopping. So an oncogene though is a cancerous gene. Proto-oncogene is not a cancerous gene. An oncogene is a cancerous gene. So an oncogene is a gas pill that's been stuck where it's constantly pushed downward and the cell is dividing out of control. So a cancerous cell would have an oncogene, a normal healthy cell would have a proto-oncogene. Another kind of gene does the opposite. It acts like a brake pedal where it stops the cell from growing. Tumor suppressor genes are normal genes that slow down cell division. They repair DNA mistakes and they tell the cells when to die. And so cells are programmed to die at different times. And they tell the cell when they're too old, when they're worn down, and when the cell should die. So it's like a brake pedal in the car where it tells the cell to not divide too quickly, to stop dividing. But when something goes wrong with the gene, then cell division has no breaks. It doesn't it has no way to stop. It grows out of control and becomes cancer. That last bullet point is really long. You can condense or paraphrase it. Um, you can just say the main thing is that it acts like a brake pedal where it controls cell division. But when that gene is mutated, it doesn't work, it's a car without any brakes where the car cannot stop and the, the cells cannot stop growing at that point. They grow out of control. So you have cancer when these two genes are damaged. When you have an oncogene, tumor suppressor gene that's damaged, you have cancer. So you have to have lots of things go wrong for there to be a cancer cell in your body. And so it seems like cancer is very common, but it, it, if you think about how that many cells divide, you have billions of cells dividing all the time, it's very, very rare. Most cells are not cancerous cells. You have to have a lot go wrong to get cancer. Basically, it's like a brake pedal that stops the cell from dividing too quickly. 
And if that gene is damaged, then like a mutation can damage the gene, then cell division is just out of control. Did you get that one done? Okay, got that. Okay. So some cancers can be hereditary and passed on. So you can inherit certain kinds of cancer. So the common ones that are inherited that pass through families are breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, prostate cancer. Um, homework tonight is page 139. Do questions one through nine, or sorry, one through five on page 139. Do what? Oh, go back. Um, tomorrow, I'll just remind me tomorrow. I can give it to you. So homework tonight, questions one through five on page 139. And we'll finish up this, the notes yes, tomorrow in class. We didn't get to it today. Yeah.